The blast caused the worst offshore oil spill in American history. 206 million gallons of oil gushed into the Gulf, and much of it wound up on Gulf Coast beaches, including right here in Florida, where workers have spent months cleaning it up. As our Carson Chambers explains in depth, a day on the beach may surprise you as oil and tar remain where the naked eye cannot see. The sugar white sand along Pensacola Beach looks pristine. The sparkling Gulf water is clear and green. One year after the Gulf oil spill, tourists are back to soak up the Pensacola Beach sun. Restaurants and hoteliers are hoping for a comeback summer. Yeah, I'm happy to report that the beach is up there in an excellent condition. They, uh, we've completed mechanical operations on all of the beaches up there. We're maintaining some crews up there to, you know, to patrol and, and monitor beaches for uh, you know, going forward so that we can keep an eye on things and respond to anything if, uh, if necessary. A BP representative says oiled sand was removed, sifted, and put back on the beach last summer. A federal report released by independent scientists in February says the cleanup was a success, and University of South Florida scientists reported the same. But we're learning clean does not mean oil-free. Booties. Researcher Rip Kirby is part of a USF study documenting the effects of the oil spill on Panhandle beaches. It's part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore. We met him on a public beach just west of Pensacola Beach called Fort Pickens Federal Preserve, one of four beaches heavily oiled during the spill. Fort Pickens has a sensitive natural habitat and was hand cleaned, unlike the other amenity beaches. It's why Kirby brings special equipment tonight. It has um, the ability to emit ultraviolet light. As we head to the beach with the ultraviolet light, a sign warns us about contamination. Then, as the sun sets, we start digging. When we were trying to figure out a way to find this stuff and differentiate it between peat, which pretty much looks like tar, uh, we came came across the idea that we could use ultraviolet light. Kirby says the UV light reveals oil the human eye can't see. This is what kids are going to do. They're going to dig with their hands, right? Turn on this, and there you go. What that is is a grain of sand that's been coated with the oil. And it had this peculiar orange fluorescent signature. We dig a little more, and... and... See, when I dig down in here, underneath it, There's the sand right there. That's what I'm looking for. Under the UV light, it's easy to see bright orange sand and tar balls. This is the oil fluorescing. That's a huge tar ball right there in your hand. Kirby tells me he wouldn't let his grandchildren play here. He also says they're conducting toxicology tests. A federal report, including Fort Pickens Preserve, says short-term and long-term exposures would not result in unacceptable health risks. Back at Pensacola Beach, crews still scour the shoreline every day for tar balls, tar mats, and other oil contamination. The day we visited, they removed more than 300 pounds from Escambia County beaches. One year after the oil spill, scientists say the beaches are clean. But clean does not mean oil-free. In Escambia County, I'm Carson Chambers, ABC Action News. And don't forget about our continuing coverage online. Just head to abcactionnews.com slash oil spill. Wildfires in Texas have scorched more than one million acres over the past two weeks.